after having worked in public education for 31 years and looking at all of the testing and the impact that testing was having on students that I was very interested in opening a school that really focused on learning and student learning and not focusing on the testing. So to be able to offer an environment like that where parents would have an option of making that choice for their child. For me, uh, timing was key. I was in Leadership Knoxville's program at the time. Bill Haslam had been my previous boss, was now the governor, and he spoke to us at a chamber meeting. He looked out into the audience and he spoke to us as leaders and he said, now is your chance to make a meaningful change in education reform and shame on you if you don't play a role in that. And I felt like he was speaking to me that yeah. day. That's what caused me to uh, start asking some questions and doing some research. The other thing is that one of my classmates was Daryl Culhorse, who was with uh, BNWY 12, and uh, he had said in one of our leadership classes that their biggest issue was trying to attract talent um, in the major disciplines to our region. Um, and so why not grow that talent? We just decided, you know, let's, uh, let's start a charter school. I called Pat up and, and Pat joined us at one of our meetings. When you started talking about teaching a standard in the classroom, but then going and um, implementing that into the real world and having those experiences, and you talked about how kids learned and how the brain was able to retain, that's where you kind of hooked me. I'm thinking, you know, she's onto something. When children are able to experience something firsthand, then you have that retention of information moving from short-term memory to long-term memory is much more profound. We applied uh, to be a charter school in Blount County and, and we were denied. Yes. <laughs> and, but then we were denied at the state level because we had to pay our dues. Uh, but Dr. Nixon suggested we reapply and we chose not to. Because we really wanted to look at being able to provide an independent school experience for this community. Well, that gave you the flexibility to teach the way you knew was going to be good for students. That's exactly right. I wanted to be able to do things differently as far as with the curriculum. I wanted to do things differently with the assessment piece of it. And so there was multiple layers of what I wanted to change uh, for a school that we could create uh, that would be independent of any other restrictions. And uh, goodness, we started looking at property. Remember for that? Yes, I do remember <laughs> we that. We looked at every empty church and every <laughs> empty uh, school uh, in, in Blount County in Maryville. And, and it was time consuming, you know, going through the application process that was about a two year period, yes, right? And taking that hat off and going the independent route was absolutely the right thing to do. Kevin got involved and we had uh, a meeting over at Clayton Homes. So I'm trying to minimize everything. We don't need a whole lot. We just need, you know, a few classrooms. That's all we need, a little land, a few classrooms. And, and then Kevin said, well, now do you, do you, need, a, do you need a cafeteria? And, Pat, and, and Pat, I look at Pat and Pat was like, yeah, we need a cafeteria. And I'm like, and then he's like, well, do you need a library? And I'm like, we don't need a library. We don't need. And Pat's like, yeah, it would be nice. A library would be nice. And so, and then Kevin back and forth, and I'm just like, uh, it was getting out of hand. <laughs> then we get out, and it was about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening, and we're all standing there, and, and he says, yeah, well, let's, let's do this. And then he left, and we're like, what does that mean? Yes. What does let's do this mean? <laughs> Um, but it's been so much fun to see him have fun um, yes. and to c give back to the community in this meaningful way. He was really captured by the idea of looking at education in a different way. Of course, we wouldn't exist if it were not for his generosity uh, in what he's done with the buildings themselves. Some of the things that I was thinking about was how important it was for these classrooms to really look like what you would walk into someone's living room. The value that that had on uh, absence of threat, which we know is so important to provide for students because we want students to be able to stay in the frontal lobe and not move down to the brainstem where no learning occurs. The 
that uh, year that we were talking to parents about coming and joining us with it at Clayton Bradley STEM Academy, we had uh, 77 families that signed up. At that point in time, of course, uh, in January and February, March, when we were having these parent meetings and, and you and the other board members were giving tours of the location where the school was going to be, <laughs> the grassy there was nothing here. The grassy knolls, I call them. And there's going to be a school here in six months. There is. <laughs> <laughs> there is. It was so fun to listen to you talk about your passion about education and uh, what we were going to do and you know it was just it was just going to be so easy and not that it, you know it was a lot of work. <laughs> Pat was doing meetings in her garage with some of the teachers. I <laughs> That's so true. It did start in, in my garage. garage. <laughs> and I'm thinking four or five teachers and I had this board member call me and say Bogarts. I, I, do you know what's going on in Pat's garage? And I was like, what? She's like, like, like there are a lot of people in there. Like, uh, the teachers were meeting in my yeah, garage just to, to start with instruction. That is so true. I completely forgot so. about it. When, uh, you know, I was talking to the parents and we were waiting and they broke ground on the six cottages in the family center the first week of April. And then we, we started school that year on July the 17th. So they, from the first week in April until July, and we broke ground and took ownership then of the buildings, is how long it took them to bring in those six cottages and complete the family center, which was amazing. We opened with a K through sixth grade school. And then the next year then we added seventh, ball. eighth, and ninth. <laughs> Oh, wow. We were, we were like already going to go seventh, right. so we were going to add eighth and ninth right. to it. In year two. And yes. I'm thinking, this is going a lot faster than we planned. And every time I drive on the campus, I'm just so in awe. Uh, it is so much more than we ever expected. Um, and, and it's everything we wanted to do, and then some. The center of our focus is what's going to be best for children. And I've always been very passionate about children and about children learning. I mean, I've given my whole life, almost 40 years in education. I'm just proud and grateful, incredibly grateful. Kevin and Clayton Holmes and uh, all, the, all the sponsors that we've had over the years that have been very supportive to the school. Parents that uh, believe in our vision and believe in our philosophy at school and how children learn because it's very important. Uh, to the success of the school. Goodness, you know, looking back, things just happened for a reason, the way that they did. and, and They and really did. The outcome has been amazing, and it's just been fun to watch the journey.